and welcome to our new topic. Today we're going to be looking at hazardous earth and this whole topic we're going to be thinking about what's happening underneath our feet, inside the earth, how is this moving and how is this creating volcanic eruptions, um, earthquakes and tsunamis to happen, so how this then affects humans. In the first lesson today we're going to look at the structure of the earth, the tectonic plates, what's happening underneath our feet and how this is going to make the plates move, which we'll talk about in the following few weeks. OK, so in this lesson, we're, as I said, we're going to be talking about um, the topic of hazardous earth. And this is really lesson one, which talks about the plate tectonics, how the plates are moving on our planet, um, what's happening underneath our feet and how this is going to create these hazards in the future. So if you look at some of the pictures on the slide, you might think some of these things are a bit familiar. We've got some volcanic eruptions. We've got another one there. We've got some earthquakes have clearly happened here and that's made the uh, ground shake. and there we've got some hazards that we're going to produce from that um, another volcanic eruption at the top there and then these two pictures here are showing us tsunamis so we're going to get onto that throughout this topic okay so the first thing we need to think about is what is the structure of the earth so as a bit of a starter we need to think about what's actually inside the earth so you can discuss this with with someone near you brother sister parents whatever or um, you can just think about it yourself and write some ideas down. So pause now and write something down. OK, so you might have thought about um, the idea of a flat earth. So this is obviously a conspiracy that lots of people have talked about. You might have thought about the idea of hollow earth, this one here. So maybe inside the earth, they used to think that perhaps there's air inside there. Perhaps it's completely hollow and you could get all the way down and get to the other side or have a look at this picture here some people used to think there was some form of sun or heat source inside the earth and actually that is that is quite true so this picture in the middle is what we know as the theory of the structure of the earth at the moment no one's ever been there um we can't get there it's too dangerous to get there and all the material we have just melts if we dig down into the crust it gets too hot but we have some ideas about what we think it's like inside the earth and it starts with this hot very, very hot inner core, almost as hot outer core. And then as we go out towards the crust, which is this top layer here, which we stand on, we have a hard, solid outer shell, which we can then stand on and indeed build on and that the ocean sits on top of. So this is the current structure that scientists believe is inside the Earth. And we're going a little going to learn a little bit more about that now. So if you look at the layers of the earth, going from the outside in, we've got the crust, mantle, outer core and inner core. And careful of spelling of these, the mantle is L-E at the end, which people often get wrong. So we need to learn a little bit more. First things first, we need to be able to label these four, um, these four labels on our earth, inside the earth in order. But I want you to learn a little bit more about these today. So if you could watch that first video, And we're going to be making some notes on what's actually inside the earth. So watch the video now and then come back to my video after that. OK, so for this task, you can use this earth diagram if you can access the Google Doc. I've put the, share, uh, the link, I've shared the link with you in the comments below so that you can do this and you can got the template to do it but if you want you can do just copy and paste a picture like the one on the slide before of the layers of the earth if you find that easier so you can either use my template or you can do um, one from the internet and what I want you to do is if you're using the template I want you to cut it out follow the instructions on the sheet and stick it in the way that it looks like on this slide so you should have an inner core outer core mantle with the convection currents moving around and then the crust and you stick this down so that you can open it up and it's like a lift the flap and you can write the information inside so pause the tape now if you're working with that print it or draw your own copy or get your own copy and stick that in your book once you've got it all stuck in then come back to the video and we'll write some information around each of the layers okay so now you've done your diagram what you do write some notes around your layers of the earth diagram so you can stick that 
in the middle of your page or in the middle of a piece of paper or in the middle of a Word document. And then you can use these notes um, to write some information about each layer. So we learn a bit more about each layer. And I'm going to talk you through them one by one. Or you can use, as it says on the slide, page 108 if you have the Jog.1 textbook, which some schools have, or you can Google layers of the earth so you can see a diagram of all the layers of the earth. Now, all that information has just popped up. We'll start with the inner core. So let's start looking at this one here. So inside the earth is incredible heat energy. And what's happening inside the earth is radioactive decay. You don't need to worry too much about what this is, but it's lots of reactions, which mean that heat energy is released from the inner core. And this generates the heat, which warms up and kind of radiates out from inside the earth. The hottest part, this is the hottest part of the earth, and it can get up to 5,000, 5,500 degrees C here. So it's the hottest um, place on earth. It's solid as in the structure is solid. Um, so instead of being a liquid or like molten magma, it's complete solid due to this immense pressure of all the other layers pushing down on it. And it's made of iron and nickel, so um, actual metals inside the earth. And next we're gonna have a look at the outer core. So you can write these notes around your diagram under the little subheading of outer core. So this is actually a liquid layer and it flows. It's also made up of iron and nickel. And this layer um, flows because it's a liquid, it's flowing and moving around the solid inner core. This actually generates Earth's magnetic field. So that's why we have um, a magnetic field on our planet. It's generated by this movement in the outer core. So heading out further still, we have our mantle. And this is a semi molten layer. Now, what that means is it's not quite liquid and it's not quite solid. So sometimes people think of this as like a really thick custard or like ketchup. So if you imagine it doesn't really flow. If you try to tip up a ketchup, ketchup bottle, it doesn't really flow. It very, very slowly comes out. But if you shake it up and tip it up, it will slowly flow. So it's like a really thick, gloopy, viscous liquid but we sometimes call it semi-molten. So it's half melted or semi-molten. And this is called magma. So it's very, very similar to lava, but it's inside the Earth's surface. And lava is what it's called when it comes out of a volcano. But this inside is called magma. This is the biggest section of the Earth in terms of its like size and width. Um, it's very, very large. And it's approximately 2,900 kilometers deep, if you're thinking about the size. So that's why on your diagram, you'll see the mantle is a much bigger layer than the other ones, much, much bigger in scale compared to the crust. And this magma is moving around, okay? Because it's semi-molten, it can move. It gets moved by the heat coming out from the inner core and the outer core, radiating into the mantle, which makes that move. And this is gonna make our crust move which sits on top of that. So then we look at the crust, and this is the outer layer of Earth. We know that it's solid because we're standing on it. Um, it's sometimes called the lithosphere, and it is this solid, crusty layer, a bit like orange peel on the outside of an orange or um, the shell on the outside of an egg. So it is a thick, well, not that thick, but it's a crust layer. It's actually quite thin compared to the mantle. It's a crust layer on the outside, um, and it's about 0 to 60 kilometers thick. In some places where volcanoes are um, openings, fissures, where volcanoes can come up, it's very, very thin because obviously those, that magma is coming up um, through the volcano and forming lava. And in other places, it's much, much thicker. So it depends on where we are. Underneath mountains, our crust is gonna be incredibly thick because you have to dig down an incredibly long way to get to the magma underneath. Okay, if you wanna write these notes around your diagram, you can pause the tape now and then we'll move on. So the second part of today's um, lesson is we're gonna talk about tectonic plates. And these are what the crust is made up of. 
So the crust is thin layer around the outside of the earth. But if you imagine uh, the shell of an egg, if you were to crack that shell of the egg, it would all fit together in like little jigsaw pieces. It would still be there, but they are moving on top of our earth. So it's not a completely solid layer. So underneath, the magma is moving and that actually makes our tectonic plates move. And this map here, you can see we've got the lines, these black lines like this one here and these here. All of these black lines show the boundaries between two tectonic plates. So this is one tectonic plate. This is the North American plate and this is the Eurasian plate here. And this is the plate boundary between the two. So our crust is fractured into these plates and these sit on top of the mantle. They're almost kind of floating a little bit like two um, lilos sitting on top of a pool and they rub against each other and they push against each other. And these are our tectonic plates. They are moving, they're constantly moving and this is what generates our hazards. So you need to understand a bit more about why they are moving. So as we mentioned that radioactive decay before, inside the core of the earth it creates heat which comes out from the inner core so that heat energy is coming out from inside our core and this heats up the magma here in the mantle which makes it rise up and up and up and up and up and as it gets to the crust it flows in either direction starts to cool down and as it cools down, it then sinks and sinks back down where it then gets warmed up again. And rises and the process continues in a cycle. And this is called convection currents. It's very, very similar to um, convection in air. If you've ever done that in science above a radiator, the heat rises up because warm air always rises. Same um, principle in the mantle. The magma is warm, but warm magma rises up, cools down and then sinks because it's denser when it's cooler. So it creates these convection currents. And as these convection currents are happening in the mantle, they are going to pull this crust above. So these plates are going to be pulled apart here because the convection currents are underneath. If you think back to our swimming pool with two lilos on top again, if you imagine someone underneath the water kicking and splashing around, that's going to make your lilos move apart and that makes our crust move apart. So what I would like you to do is watch this video on YouTube. It's from a really good documentary about called Earth Power of the Planet about what's happening underneath the Earth's surface. And I'd like you to draw a diagram showing how these convection currents make the plates move. And you can go back to the slide before if it would help. Then I'd like you to explain why the plates are moving using those keywords that we've learned today. So convection currents, the core, the crust, tectonic plates, the mantle, magma and that radioactive decay happening inside. I imagine this will take you about 15 to 20 minutes and have a lovely clear diagram in your notes ready so that you understand everything we have done in today's lesson. OK, the last thing I thought I'd do is a quick quiz thinking about what we have learned in today's lesson. So what are the plates called? What makes the plates move? What's the top layer of the earth which we stand on? Is the inner core solid or liquid and why? And what makes the heat come out from the core? The answers will be on our video lesson two. Please click the uh, subscribe button so that you get notifications when lesson two comes out. Thanks very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed that lesson today and you've learned something new about what's happening underneath our feet. Please like the channel and subscribe um, for future lessons. Lesson two will be coming out soon. You can get all the answers from the quiz on the beginning of the lesson two video. And remember to click the link down below to see the resources so that you can make your own earth structure. Thanks.